Okay, so as you can see, we've pretty extensively masked up here. Uh, we've done down in here. What we're going to have to do now is these silver edges on the leading edges of the wings. Now in hindsight, looking back at it, it would have probably been easier to mask off this bottom area and spray it afterwards with these silver areas and do it all afterwards and all in one. But, you know, that's the different ways of doing it. Obviously, you can do things at your own pace and in your own way. But if I was to do it next time, I'll probably do this a bit under here last, mask up, and then spray that, although it's a bit tricky around here at the back end with these black rods. But apart from that, so what we're gonna do, just for speed, we're gonna use um, Alclads. Now, I've got a bit of dull aluminium here. As I say, it's gonna be quite a lot of weathering shortly. Um, so that's had a good mix. We're a bit high air pressure. Let's get this right down to about sort of 10 psi, 10, 15 psi. Okay, quite a bit because it doesn't go too far. Pop the lid on. Okay, we'll just check our flow. Bit smelly, obviously make sure you're in a well ventilated area and so forth and so on. Okay, now we're just gonna spray down the same. Now the great thing with using um, the alkalides as they don't get much overspray, it doesn't travel, certainly like you'll find with, um, you, if we were using acrylic, if we used to use the citadels and things like that. And there we go, so we just dry those off a bit. As I say, we could have done it before, you could mask these up, but as I say, my worry is obviously you've got tape hanging over, unless you're gonna trim it all in tight, that you'll knock it and you get a bit of a wiggly line going up. So that's why I always like to do it last. Okay, so we're just gonna have a quick unmask here to see what we've got on one of the, the wings. And obviously the silver, looking at the references, doesn't follow the panel line either. It sort of tapers in. There we go, that's the, the silver on the wing there. And as I say, because it's sort of the dull, it won't be so much in your face. Obviously, if we'd used perhaps, you know, one of the, the more silvery silvers, if you like, um, the chances are, there's the underside as well, the chances are that it, made, it might have made it just a little bit too in your face. And obviously, as I was saying, we're going for a nice weathered look. We're going to be getting on with some streaking on the underside shortly. So I'll just get this all undone, and then we'll get on with some decaling. Okay, as you can see, we've started on the old um, decaling on it. We've got the big numbers on the top there and we're working our way right the way through. It's pretty well straightforward on this. There's just some small uh, amount of little ones that go on the bottom, but these big ones uh, are quite important to get right and line them up. And obviously they're gonna line up with the panels, with the two large panels at the top. Now, one little tip, these have been on here now. I've used the micro set and sole, the blue one and the red one on this. Um, blue one goes down first, coat it all over, and then we put the decal on, position it, give it another coat, let it dry for a few minutes, and then basically give it a bit of a roll round with a cotton wool bud just to take off, you know, the, the excess sort of moisture. And then we're gonna go around, then we went around with the red one and gave it all over, and then we've waited about half an hour till we get to this stage. Now at this point, all I do, take your craft knife, nice and sharp, okay? Lay it in the panel line and just drag it down. <coughs> He says, okay, lay it in your panel line, okay, and just drag it down and follow it like that all the way down. Then all you do, grab some of the sole, the red one, okay, and give it over it. Now what that will do is actually open up the panel line, let the decal sink into it and conform to it a lot better. Because it's quite, it's not a thick decal, but it, it's, it's a little bit too thick. It's not as thin as some of the others, shall we say. So what happens is if you didn't do that, it would just lay flat over the top. Now, when we come to give it a wash in that, obviously you won't get the panel line in the number. So doing it this way, you put it in, and then hopefully what happens is it all will shrink back, conform into that panel line, and away you go. Now, obviously do the ones that run through everywhere, and obviously these ones at the end, is literally just where the clear carrier film is and we're just making sure that those panel lines are open so we're just doing there and there and obviously we've got the large ones on the wing 
So make sure we're in the panel line. And we're just going to run the blade right through. So in theory, um, we're actually cutting it clean in half, putting it on, and off we go. Now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I've done the other side just a few minutes ago. Um, and as you can see, we've got the wrinkling, but you can actually see the panel line physically running through that decal there. And obviously on the lettering, you can see it's still wet there. But as you can see, it's wrinkling down in there, which means it's working. Now, it might need two or three coats just in there, but as I do it, I sort of come back to it and do a little bit more and then just do it like that. But it is important. Otherwise, it is this thing. You put the wash on and the line, black line or your dark gray line comes along and it stops dead where the marking is and carries on. And obviously for this one, because we faded the paintwork as we've done with this one, we're going to fade in these decals as well, which is another little trick, which I'll show you in a minute how to do. Okay, so sometime later, there we go, we're all decals and all done. Lots and lots of little decals on here, not massively detailed. Um, obviously it just does those sort of yellow bars to indicate writing and things like that. But you see, we're all done. So what I'm gonna do is let that dry now for the next sort of um, about an hour, hour and a half. And then we're gonna give it a coat of future uh, or Johnson's clear. And then we're gonna leave it half an hour, then give it another coat, then we'll leave it 24 hours really to go totally off, and then we're gonna give it a wash and then crack on with some heavy duty weathering with it. But there we go, as I say, the old day glow number's looking great. Okay, so we're just getting all the bits and pieces together here. So literally, I've just put the wheels on. They're a nice push fit. You don't even have to glue those. I'm um, saying the central one pushes up slightly off kilter. It could do with going up just a little bit more. But what I wanted to show you was, <coughs> Um, obviously, we've got these little tiny wheels at the back here. Is it focus in? Can't quite get you. There we go. Um, we've got these little wheels at the back. Now, the trouble with them is, obviously, is masking them and painting them up. So I've got a little technique I did. So here's our wheel um, that we've got here, as you can see. So what we want to do, if I put it around that way. Hold on. Just move the sprue. Okay. So... If I just center you up here, there we go. Um, what I actually did, just to show you, I got my um, some Citadel paint, um, just like this. Then if you get yourself a cocktail stick, and I just sanded it flat on the end, so it's cut and then put flat. Okay, we just dunk it into the Citadel paint, like so. All right, then we're just gonna come along. I'll bring you in. Here we go, we're just gonna come along and we're just gonna dab it right in the middle, just like that. And that gives us then, if you can see that, uh, that gives us then our perfect little silver bit in the middle. So it saves having to mask it and try and hand paint it and get a, a round circle like that, would be near on impossible. But that's just a quick little cheat way of doing that one. And it saves having to obviously do the silver work first and then paint the black and so forth and so on. Um, what I've also got on the go at the moment, um, just literally out of my spares box, I've got the Hasegawa weapon set, which is in uh, the set C, which is the missiles, um, a Sidewinder bees. So I've got two of those because obviously they're going to go on the wingtips and we're going to, um, on the wingtips, but under the wings and we've got the two. Feet. Okay, so next up is going to have a wash. So I'm going to use the Pro Model as dark straight out of the pot and literally we're just going to brush this on all over. Now it's highly glossed this surface because we had a few so obviously if it is like that and it needs working in just obviously keep rubbing it in and go everywhere now remember it's been drying now for 24 hours really um, 12 hours is fine over a, a clear coat of future but if you can give it 24 hours that is your your best bet and when you get an area perhaps like a fingerprint and the wash pulls off if you just keep giving it a rub it'll shift it now the other thing is also if you get to a situation perhaps and you do this and the wash doesn't stick to the the paintwork it's not smooth it's are you pooling just give it a drop of washing up liquid of dishwater detergent something like that um, and that will help break it the surface tension and help it get in there and get working so we're going to cover this completely everywhere in the wash i'm not going to follow panel lines because obviously we want a nice even um, weathering. Okay, wash has been on there for about sort of um, 20 minutes. We're all totally dry. You see, it's nice weathering like that. Okay, now having just eaten a chocolate biscuit, we don't want to cover this in chocolate. Um, so we're going to lick to moisten. Okay, all right. I'm just going to give a gentle rub all around. Now we've gone over um, future on this, which if you imagine, it's really 
near a gloss so it's going to come off with a nice quite a sharp clean finish it might give a tiny amount of weathering in some areas but as we can see there it's coming up very nice so if we just do one side okay. remember when you're taking off um, the wash um, you're also doing it to push it in as well so where you haven't got any wash perhaps that's in there you've missed a spot or whatever you know just encourage it in there slightly and remember if you want to do this dirty striping thing as I'm doing here all you do is grab a, a bit wet on your cloth like this okay then place it down elsewhere and then drag it and I don't know how well you can see that but you get this sort of straight uh, streaky type of effect we're going to work a little bit more of that in a moment we're just trying to get most of it off right now and then we'll come back and get in there with some proper heavy duty weathering if you like so i really want to go to town uh, on the underside of this particular one so we're just trying to get the majority of it off now for this metal finish under here i'm not going to moisten it at all because i want it to be a little bit sort of dirty a little bit gritty type of finish on that metal on the underside there purely so it gives it that nice sort of warm dirty look but there we go this is this side done i'm going to carry on now and do the other side and get it off of the top half as well okay so that's the underside all done all weathered uh, hopefully you can see that quite well but it really brings it to life and using the gray um, wash don't go any darker than that because it's that nice subtle without being too in your face if you use black it'll be really overkill under here and there we go all done all the panel line washing done um, it's really brought it to life certainly on the underside it's come out a lot better than it actually has on the top obviously because it's darker um, what we're going to do now is basically leave this just to totally dry have a final wipe around it with a cloth making sure we're going in the rear direction and then we're going to give it a coat of future just to seal in that wash on there and then we're going to come back and give it another bit of wash to do some weathering with okay so we've got a bit of a flat coat now we've just got a standard um, extra acrylics uh, extra acrylics even flat varnish so what we do is just give this a gentle blow over slightly out of shot okay so now this has had a flat coat just a normal flat coat not a dead flat coat anything else like that now we're going to come along with our pro modelers wash okay and we're just going to run it down in a few panel line areas just like that if we do one in here and one there okay so we have it just like that and then take a cotton bud just a normal one a good quality one does work a bit better okay and then just simply drag it back over the entire thing so you go back over it completely like that i don't know how well you're going to be able to pick that out um, by it but as you can see you get a sort of you know streaky type effect running back as they seem to have now what i'm going to do i'm going to take a couple of stills which you'll get on your screen in a minute that will show you this in action so once you've done one and you think well that look works okay okay come back we're going to stick a bit more down in here a bit more around this undercarriage area pick out various bits and pieces perhaps um, areas where you really want it to be quite heavy same thing come along and just streaking it straight back now it's important to make sure you're straight back other things as well that are sort of equally important is when you're doing it sometimes you get various bits on aircraft where obviously the air doesn't flow directly back so to speak it might you know actually curve around because there's something sticking out so allow for those curves um so you know obviously it's on this area it's quite flat but if you've got pylons and that where the airflow gets distorted around things obviously you'll have to follow so we're going to do one more little bit of that up here we're just going to add a few bits to the front up here okay some quite heavy areas and we're going to do some on this metal work as well just like that okay and then we're just going to come back and we're going to start streaking it all over the entire thing And 
And there we go. So we get this type of effect. Now, I honestly can't tell too much how it's coming out on camera. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a couple of stills now to show you exactly what we've got. Okay, so if you see them, then what we're going to do is we're going to carry on and basically build up the area. Now, we don't want to go um, perhaps back to that area now. So what we're going to do, we're going to start down here. And when you get a little bit more confident, you can just start slapping it around um, a little bit more, perhaps as you would like. And certainly things like behind gear doors always tend to get quite a bit. So we're just going to like that. Okay, and then we're going to just drag it all the way back. And then obviously because we're now going over a slightly flat finish, it's going to stick to it just a little bit and give you that nice sort of streaking dirt thing that we were talking about. Okay, so we'll just do a little bit down here, a little bit on here. Now backs of flaps, obviously quite important. The flapper on is obviously going to pick up quite a bit of dirt. So same thing. I'm going all over it. Okay. Just the dirty up. But what you want to do is try and make it even. Now, if this went totally wrong and you didn't like it, all you're going to need to do is a very, very moist piece of towel, wet it and give it a bit of more of a rub than you normally do and it still will come off. The only time this really isn't going to come off is one, if you like your paint like sandpaper, okay, and it really, really is rough. Or secondly, you're going over a dead flat coat and then you are going to leave a lot more behind than what you're going to take. But there we go, that gives that nice thing. And all you do is every now and again, you just pop back and you just redo an area and you'll get layers, if you like, will actually build up, you know, as you go. And you'll just get more and more streakiness, more and more build up as you go. And obviously the more layers you get on, the darker it's going to get. Another way you do it, if you get some um, wash and bung it in a paper cup like this, the water will soak through, okay? This is one out of McDonald's, okay? But it'll leave the wash, it acts like a filter. And when it goes dry, it works very, very well. So then if you get a, a, a cotton bud, okay? Wet it slightly, give it a rub, and you'll pick it up on the end like this. You can then start, you know, where you find vents and various bits and pieces. You can use it like a pastel. Okay, and it'll work a bit like we're sort of doing the, the same thing with the pencil. This will really do roughly the same thing. I'm not saying that's it. None of you need to go out now and buy the pencil. But it really gives a, a nice little technique. So you go along like that. And then if you take your, as long as you're totally dry, take your towel okay and just give it a a bit of a rub or you could use anything you like okay you can then do that nice streaky business what i'm saying about just like that or you can use a little bit of a q-tip okay and there you go you can work it in to get that nice streakiness just like that and it's a great way of dirtying it up so what I'm going to do, we've obviously the underside is going to pick this up a lot, lot more than obviously the top side will. Okay, so that's all done now. Um, so I'm quite happy with the way that's turned out. Done the top half as well. Now we've done streaking perhaps basically from here back on these tops of the wings and obviously on the tails, things like that. And that's all just the wash. That's no airbrushing or anything else or pastels, anything else like that. It's literally just the wash. So what I'm going to do now is to protect all that and seal it in and to have a good look at it. Um, so we're going to give this a coat of flat. We're just going to be using the um, extra acrylics flat straight over the top. Um, just a normal coat, not a dead flat finish. And then basically what we're going to do is have a good look at it and then perhaps do a little bit of post shading just around, just give it a little bit more weathering of perhaps around sort of vents and things like that. Okay, so basically now this has been drying for sort of about 20 minutes. Um, really, really happy with the underside. To me, that looks pretty much spot on. 
just going to do a few little bits as you'll see in a minute to that but as far as I'm concerned the underside is now done okay so now we've got the top side and obviously back half's looking pretty well weathered but the front's looking a little bit too clean um, what I've got let me turn the old compressor on um, I've got some um, Tamiya smoke which is X19 now if I spray it on here you see it's sort of an oily colour um, smoke I think is a little bit of an exaggeration quite a high air pressure and all we're going to do is randomly go round it it's sort of it's just like a weathering we're not post shading or anything else like that we're just trying to give the color a little bit of depth by sort of maneuvering it round so all we're going to do is go around the entire thing and pick out some bits and pieces now also what we're going to do is we're gonna afterwards we're gonna lay out some little things as you'll see to come on um, but I'll explain that better in a minute when I can show you but for the minute we're just gonna pop around I'm picking out panels, just little things like that, things coming off of vents. Okay, so a nice little weathering touch you can do is actually when you get it over the back of flaps and things like that. So all you do, obviously make sure you've got your levels down first, but if you pop your tape over the edge, just like that, then you take your airbrush, Okay, and obviously I'll do this slightly off kilter. And then all you do is just give a little shadow in a couple of areas, just like that. And then you peel off and you get that nice shadow just down the back like that. And you can do that all over it, but it works particularly well on um, flats and things. Because obviously it gives that little stain effect just like that as if it's got you know obviously it's building up a lot of wear and tear at the back end so we just do this other side here okay so as you can see we've moved on a little bit um, basically what we've done now we've got the undercarriage main ones in very straightforward we've put the little lamps on as well now because obviously we've done for flat coat in the bottom and we've installed the pylons basically I didn't bother going through it because it's all very straightforward tail wheel in um, it just clicks in there and then obviously you're going to put up now I've got a few little sprue marks I'm going to have to take care of that's why I've got the old silver paint to hand just around just to touch up any little marks as we go um, but there we go we're all getting there as you can see there's on its undercarriage it's not quite dry enough yet to get down there um, also what I've done is I've got some um, side winders uh, just out of my spares box so we've painted them up green um, also we've got some um, Falcon missiles there um, the uh, four F4 missiles um, so they're all done and all ready so what we're going to do now is basically we're going to fit some a uh, little bit still in the back here some little struts and then we're going to get the gear doors all installed and then we can get all the armament on board okay so we're all dry now and as you can see it's not a tail sitter and it's sat up and it's looking very very nice I'm um, a bit concerned about the front wheel. It doesn't seem to fit brilliantly well. I'm going to play with that in a minute. Um, the engine nozzle I've done, put together, and it's all there. Um, gloss black, and then I made a mix with some um, a sort of metallic one. A bit of black, um, a bit of brown, and a bit of silver, just to make a sort of an engine shiny metal type colour thing going on. So that's that. So what we're going to do, we're just going to slide this in the back. So obviously it's got this little nice groove that it sits into so we're just going to put some glue into that groove and then it should all going well slide nicely down and we just hold it there and there we go we've got the nice nozzle in the back there underneath here the pylons are all dry now so we can test fit these aren't actually glued but we're assuming they'll hold yep these nice metal fuel tanks will go underneath and we'll fit we can fit the side winders on in a moment so we can get those on there the last thing to do really is the ram air door um, down there uh, which i think opens up when it's powered down position so we've got to do that um, so we can finish getting those bits on and we've just got to still put the doors on the back here just on there so they can go on in a moment okay so we're almost to the finishing stages i've put on the aerials obviously we've got a weapons fit now we've got the sidewinders on we've got the ram air is in there all the bits pieces i've just got a tiny little bit of black work to do on the wheels but as you can see we're all done underneath there 
Um, moving around onto the top side, say some more aerials basically gone on, but we're done there for the weathering. So what we're gonna do now is give this its final flat coat before we can unmask and do things like navigation lights and such. So we've got the air compressor right up to maximum. Um, we've got the airbrush here loaded up with um, the extra acrylics flat. Now this is basically 90% uh, acrylics with just 10% thinners. I'm just going to dust it on all over as our final sealer coat if you like. So quite a generous coat and it should lighten it up even more than it is. the other side. Okay, just cut to air and dry that off a touch. Making sure you always do down the spine as well. Okay. When we can flip it over and do the underside. But you obviously do the undercarriage and the missiles and things like that. It sort of does them all in one, if you like. And there we go. So we'll cut to air. And we'll get it back up onto its undercarriage. Let's move this out the way. Not that anymore. Okay, I'll tuck that out the way. Okay, so the last things that we can do now is basically we can unmask, so very, very carefully. We're just going to wiggle the top free. Now we've still got to do the seat. Now I'm not going to concentrate too much on the seat, to be honest with you, um, because a resin replacement is the way to go, uh, in all honesty. But what we can do is have a quick unmask. So if we just get our blade under a corner, Okay, and we we'll just ease the tape off like that. Okay, if we do the front, same on this one, just put the blade underneath. There we go. So we've just got to install the seat onto there, a quick wipe around the canopy obviously to sort of just to clean it up really and bring it all to life. And then we've got to do the lights. Now the lights, you have two options. Um, you've got the navigation lights and the wing roots here on both sides. Now the thing is you can either cut out the actual plastic, the leading edge of that wing and then fit the clear ones in or you can paint them as it is. I'm going to nick them out with a knife. We could have done this earlier but I like to do lights and things last if you like. Um, or if you like, <laughs> so all we do, knife goes in one, and we're just going to take a little nick out of the wing root. Now, if I bring you in, you can see what I've done. So we've just taken that nick at that wing root there, and then we have our clear sprue here with our lights which we're going to do so i'm going to get both of these on and install okay so there we go the build's complete one side draken all done um the only weak part really is the actual seat itself it's not particularly nice i'm hoping that aries will release the seat as a, um, a standalone piece on its own i know they've done the entire cockpit set which you know in some ways it doesn't need a whole cockpit you can't see much down in there and it's quite well detailed anyway but certainly a replacement seat is really a must um, if you're going to be displaying it. Um, I hope I showed you the underside, obviously doing all this um, work under here um, with the streaking effect and things like that. I think it looks lovely. Um, it looks fine to the actual naked eye. I don't know obviously how well it's coming out on camera, but it looks very streaky, very dirty and just like the real thing like that. Um, the kit itself has been an absolute pleasure to go together. Um, it's pretty much faultless. Um, only trouble we really had was those blanking areas on the inside and doing the, you know, getting obviously everything to marry up and to be blended in if you like. Um, but say two loads of filler, two loads of sanding and filling and we were done. You know, it really was straightforward. Apart from that, the rest of the kit completely fell together. There's not a problem. Dropping the flaps is very, very simple. I hope I showed you how to do that. It's not a problem. It's very, very straightforward to do and really anybody can do it. 
It's a great kit. I'd recommend it to anyone. I'd like to thank Armorang for sending it to us um, to build, and it'll be going back to them shortly. Um, so thanks a lot to you guys. I hope you enjoyed the build, and join me again next time. Mm -hmm.